Have you ever wondered why major chords are happy and why minor chords are sad? Well, it has a lot to do with the concept known as brightness. Major chords happen to be brighter than minor chords. Now, brightness can be defined as the relative size of the intervals within a particular chord or a scale. Wider intervals are perceived as being brighter than smaller intervals. So major chords with their major third are brighter than minor chords with their minor third. Under this basic definition of brightness, augmented chords are brighter than major chords because they have a wider fifth, the augmented fifth, as compared to a major chord's perfect fifth. Now for me, augmented chords certainly don't sound happier than major chords. In fact, they sound quite dissonant and actually kind of sour, I suppose. So you actually have to think about brightness as its own unique music characteristic aside from happiness or even consonants and dissonance. It's related though, because too much brightness in a chord sounds dissonant, like an augmented chord, but too little brightness and it also sounds dissonant, like a diminished chord, for example. The balance of the size of the intervals, and thus the brightness of major and minor chords is what makes them so useful for us. Now we can apply the idea of brightness to more than just chords. We can actually apply them to scales as well. Let's take the seven modes of the major scale. I have them listed here from brightest to darkest. Lydian is brighter than Ionian, the major scale, because of the raised fourth degree. Mixolydian, on the other hand, is darker than Ionian because of the lowered seventh, but it happens to be brighter than Dorian, which is brighter than Aeolian, which is brighter than Phrygian, which is brighter than Locrian, which happens to be the darkest mode. Now, if you take a look at this list of scales, you might notice that Dorian is in the center mm. of it. What would happen if we reorganized the list of all these scales based upon the relative brightness back to Dorian? This would involve assigning each one of the other modes in the major scale a number Number, based upon the total number of pitches that need to be changed from Dorian in order to get that mode, and in what direction, up or down. Now we could call this number something super pretentious, like the Dorian brightness quotient or something like that, which I quite like the sound of anyway. But for right now, we're just gonna call it the brightness. For example, relative to Dorian, Mixolydian has a brightness of plus one. So the interesting thing happens when we start inverting these scales. Now, in order to invert a scale, what you do is you build from the root in the opposite direction you normally would in terms of whole steps and half steps. For example, normally in Ionian, you build it by first taking the root and then ascending a whole step, and then a whole step, and then a half step, then a whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. But when you invert Ionian, what you do is you build downward in that same pattern, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. In this case, Ionian inverts to Phrygian, we say that Phrygian is the inverted scale, or the mirror scale, of Ionian. All of the major modes invert to the scale of their opposite brightness relative to Dorian, and Dorian inverts to itself. So anyway, I find all of this absolutely fascinating, but it's kind of useless unless we figure out a way of making music with it. How do we take this theoretical knowledge of brightness and apply it to making music? So first things first, let's consider the circle of fifths. We get brighter as we go around clockwise through the circle of fifths, and we get darker as we go along counterclockwise or anti-clockwise for those of you out there speaking the Queen's English. The key of G is brighter than the key of C, which is brighter than the key of F, etc., etc., etc. Let's listen to two chord progressions. The first is going to be a series of minor seventh chords going around the circle of fifths clockwise. You almost can feel like this chord progression is expanding. It's getting higher and higher, even if the actual pitches of the notes aren't always ascending and going upwards. Contrast that to this chord progression of minor seventh chords, which are going the opposite direction around the circle of fifths. This one definitely feels darker, like we're going deeper and deeper into an unending cavern. And yet there is some sense of resolution from chord to chord. Maybe not the same sense of resolution that we get from a five chord going to a one chord, but a resolution nonetheless because we're going downward. We're hearing brightness play out quite explicitly here because we're using constant structure harmony, using the same kind of chord with different roots. It's easy to hear brightness unfold this way, but the same concept can apply when you're using completely different kinds of chords. Let's check out how this much more intricate and complex chord progression gets brighter and brighter from chord to chord. The the parent scale of each individual chord relates to the parent scale of the next chord 
by the difference of one sharp. So for example, I was thinking that the first chord, G over C, came from the parent scale of C major. The second chord, G7 sharp 11, contains notes which come from D melodic minor. D melodic minor is one pitch brighter than C, since D melodic minor has a C sharp, and C major does not. This pattern of adding just one sharp from the parent scale of each one of these chords continues throughout the progression. And so subtly and very steadily, we get brighter and brighter as the chord progression continues. Have a listen. It's a subtle but very powerful compositional technique that you can use to create unity among chords that, on the surface, don't seem to be related to one another at all. Going beyond this one particular technique, we can call this kind of harmony non-functional harmony, because as a whole it doesn't seem to have any function within one particular key. Each chord is its own island in a sea of harmony. About six years ago, I was really into this intense study of modes, and I wrote a series of blog posts on my old WordPress, which unfortunately doesn't exist anymore, otherwise I would link to it, where I would happily invent terms like gradational modulation and anti-hemitonic heptatonic modality, among others. Some people liked these ideas, so they took them and tweaked them, and quite frankly made them a lot better. Um, and a few of them kind of made their way into this book, which is Modology, written by Jeff Brent, Hal Leonard book. So definitely check that out if you found this lesson at all interesting. Eventually, I kind of moved away from this intensive study of the modes because although I found it all very fascinating, I wasn't really writing too much music at the time. From this, I learned that a big value in theory comes from its application. How do you actually use the ideas that you come up with and the ideas that you learn to make music with them? It's amazing thinking about things like the inner workings of brightness and other interesting concepts within music but only if it enriches your sense of music making. I never really want to forget to make music in the first place. Anyway, this has been Adam Neely. Thank you very much for watching this. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. I have a new video coming out every Monday, so please stay tuned, and I'll see you later. If you're interested in this stuff, please definitely check out the bonus video. You can either click on the annotation here or in the links below. It contains a lot more material that I wasn't able to get to in this main video. So please enjoy and I'll see you next time.